Welcome to Easy Gluten Free. Today I'll be showing FaithHealthyRecipes.com how to make this very simple cowboy beef skillet. Now what I really have here is a London broil prepared almost like a pot roast. The reason I'm calling this a cowboy skillet is because I'm using only very basic ingredients to cook this one. And I'm also using a good old fashioned cast iron skillet like a cowboy might use. Now a London broil is a pretty lean cut of meat but it can also be pretty tough if it's not cooked properly. In my opinion, this cut of meat either needs to be cooked very quickly and served pretty rare, or cooked slowly on a low heat until it gets nice and tender and almost falls apart, which is how we're doing it today. All right, to make this we'll need a two and a half pound London broil, and I cut this in half for easier maneuverability in the pan, and so it would cook more quickly. Four medium potatoes, or you could use two small and one large like I have here, but try to cut them all into equally sized large pieces. Two medium carrots peeled and cut into large pieces, one medium onion cut into wedges, three cloves of garlic halved, three tablespoons of olive oil, two and a half cups of water, and some salt and pepper to taste. All right, now preheat the oven to 350 degrees and place your dry cast iron skillet over a high heat to get it hot. This is a standard 12 inch skillet and it fit all the ingredients I'm gonna give you today, plus there was enough room if you wanted to add a few extra veggies. Now in a medium bowl, sprinkle all the veggies with salt and pepper and toss them with a tablespoon of olive oil to get them all well coated. Then set this aside. Season the meat liberally with salt and pepper. Then rub it down with a tablespoon of olive oil. Once the pan gets hot, add an additional tablespoon of olive oil to the pan. Then place the meat presentation side down onto the pan. What that means is whatever side looks nicer should be browned first. Then the side with more marbling or sinew will end up on the bottom. That means it'll be closer to the hot pan as it cooks for the long haul. After five minutes on the first side, turn the meat over to let it brown for five minutes on the second side. Then turn off the heat and add the water to the pan, nestle in all the chopped veggies wherever they fit, and season the whole pan with additional salt and pepper. Cover the pan with a loose tent of heavy duty foil. I like to cut the piece of foil slightly larger than the pan itself, then tuck the edges into the pan so nothing drips externally into the oven, and all the juices will drip back into the pan. Bake it for an hour, then check to make sure you don't need to add any additional water. And at this point, you could also spoon some of the juices over the roast itself. Bake it for an additional hour, then remove the pan from the oven, remove the meat from the pan and place it on a dish to rest for 10 minutes, then slice the meat into quarter or half inch slices and return it to the skillet with the veggies to soak up all that juice. And then this dinner's ready to serve. Now I snipped a little parsley over the top just to make it look more photogenic. A cup of peas added during the last 10 minutes would have been a great idea here too. There are countless things that could have been added if I wasn't trying to keep this really simple. Mushrooms would have been an awesome choice here. So use your imagination and make this any way you think your family might like it. And if you'd like to see the recipe in print, you could always visit my blog. And for additional recipes and tips to fit in with your healthy lifestyle, visit my friends at FaveHealthyRecipes.com. See you again soon.